Welcome to Current Conversations, a podcast imagined by Be Alive and Rivers Our Life, where we discuss freshwater systems, the important role that rivers and watersheds play in our world, and how educating conservationists leads to a healthier planet. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode, She Flies, Tying Women Together Through Fly Fishing, and being part of a ripple of action that is creating change. I'm Ariel Roth, co-host of Current Conversations and Rivers Are Life Community Manager. And I'm Julia Rajeski, Impact Manager at Rivers Are Life and Current Conversations co-host. Today we're talking to two women who have fought to make fly fishing more inclusive and more fun. Annalisa Del Rosario is an experienced and well-traveled fly angler whose goal is to use her experience to engage women through education, events, outings, and outreach programs until they fall in love with the sport just like she did. Recently, she combined her creativity and love for the outdoors to start Canna Decor, which specializes in creating art using preserved moss. She hopes to inspire her customers and those she connects with to adopt a more sustainable lifestyle and contribute to the preservation of our natural world. Also featured in today's episode, Deegan Cherry, in addition to her numerous accolades, which we'll get into shortly, Deegan leads by example, getting young girls outdoors to enjoy our wild space and take care of them, especially when others don't. I cannot wait to share these two women with listeners today. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get into our first question. So we know a little bit about y'all, but for those listeners that might not, you are two very different kinds of advocates. Your work is similar, but it's also super different. So I just want to start out by asking Annalisa, how are you? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Um, I'm super excited, you know, to uh, be in in your podcast. Uh, yeah, I'm doing really well. Super excited about this weekend because I'm going fishing. <laughs> so <laughs> not entirely surprising. Uh, so <laughs> for those of our listeners that haven't seen our film, River of Angels, Annalisa, you're a star in that film. Could you tell us a little bit about your work and more? About yes. That? So um, how that came about is um, basically uh, Lino who was the main star of that show, um, asked uh, me to join him because in the LA area, I'm um, one of the ladies that uh, take other women out. And we thought it was, um, it was nice to actually be on, on the film because um, the LA river is basically where I go fishing a lot in um, LA. Um, there's not that many places that are like, unlike if you're going to Montana, Colorado, really cool places to catch trout. Um, we have the LA river and it's mostly carp that we catch on, on the LA river. And a lot of people think LA river is like not a good place to be. And this film I think um, what's great about it is it's really creating that awareness so other people can take notice that the LA River is actually a nice place to, you know, just escape from your busy schedule. And there's some really good spots in the LA River. And uh, I think educating more people to keep it clean um, was our main goal is to create that awareness help keep it clean. And so I, I'm really proud of the of the film. You guys did a great job, you know, putting that together. Thank you. Awesome. I don't think we thought of this earlier, but I just realized we know what fly fishing is. You two obviously know what fly fishing is, but could you explain how that differs from traditional fishing, which listeners may understand, but not understand what fly fishing is? Regular fishing is the lure is the weight and that's what makes your line go out but in fly fishing the line is the heavy part so your flies can be as light as you want them to i'll also chime in on that a little bit um i never actually fly fished or fished and like before fly fishing you know, I've watched my family go fishing. I've, you know, my husband goes traditional fishing, but I never wanted anything to do with it until um, I had to do a research for my boss on how fly fishing is because he wanted to create a website about guiding. And what I realized is fly fishing was completely different because um, 
with fly fishing, I didn't have to touch like live bait. <laughs> and with yeah. fly fishing was, um, you know, there, there are flies that, you know, we buy or we tie that replicates, you know, what the fish are eating out there. And there's two types of, you know, fly fishing where um, one of my favorite is dry fly, where the fly is sitting on top and the fish will come eat it. You know, uh, you can you can watch the fish eat it. And then there's the uh, nymphing, which is um, the fish, you know, eats from the bottom. Okay. So I I love those, you know, two different um, styles of fishing. Right. Cool. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, fly fishing and sometimes not as much in traditional fishing, you're out in the water. You're kind of immersing yourself in the river a lot of times. And there's also that kind of signature motion that comes with fly fishing that you don't see in traditional fish. That was the biggest difference for me. It looked like someone was like painting with the raw. It was the coolest thing. I remember seeing it for the first time. And I feel like that's a difference too, that maybe our listeners may have seen, but not known what was happening. I'm actually going to introduce you now, Deegan, but I do want to get started with how old are you? I am almost 14. Okay, which is incredibly impressive, especially about everything I'm about to read about you. 14, Deegan, you are an accomplished fly angler and competitive fly tier, a published writer, podcaster, wild keeper, winner of the Alex Harris Leadership Award, the Youth Excellence in Stewardship Award, and were named on the inaugural inaugural list of Austin Women Changemakers of 2024. On top of that, you are also a co-founder of Fly Girl, Fly Girl Go Global. It's a tongue twister, <laughs> um, which is a ton for your age. Could you introduce yourself to listeners and also just talk about how you got to all of that at the age of 14? Yeah, so I am Deegan. I sort of, I'm a co-founder of Fly Girl Global, which is a group of girls who tie flies and fly fish together and encourage others to clean up the water and just the earth in general. Um, I started fishing whenever I was two, I think. I think I caught my first fish at two. And I started fly fishing probably around the age of four. And whenever I was in first grade, one of the little boys told me that fishing was for boys. And so my dad made me an Instagram account to show me all of the girls who are in fishing. So I would know that I wasn't alone. And I sort of developed like a watch me mentality. And I was really dedicated to fishing after that. And, and along with fly fishing generally comes being a steward of the environment. Yeah. And I know that's part of Fly Girl Global, right? I mean, y'all do so much good work. And one thing that stood out to us in reading a little bit about your organization were the rules. Can you, can you tell us what the rules of Fly Girl Global are? So the rules of Fly Girl Global are be nice and have fun. Good rules. I like it. I think we should all maybe operate <laughs> yeah. a little bit more in life, <laughs> totally <laughs> which agree. I think leads into a great, you know, conversation. And Annalisa, we talked about this a little bit about how times differ now getting involved into fly fishing in the fishing world in general compared to when you did 11 years ago. Um, I do really love you talking about it's the fact that you don't have to touch live bait um, because here yeah. in Michigan, we are a heavy fishing state here. Um, but we do have to use worms in things. <laughs> um, yeah. No way I would do that. <laughs> um, I typically don't, and I should maybe be embarrassed to admit that on a podcast as someone in Michigan, but I do make other people bait my hook for me when I go fishing. <laughs> and I love to fish, like, a ton, but don't like to bait my hook. But I am I think you would love fly fishing, that's for sure. <laughs> I think so, too, and I do love casting. Like, that is one of my favorite parts about fishing. It's not the fishing aspect. I think casting is so beautiful when you talk about like it being a painting and everything. A good cast is fun to get right. Yeah. 
Um, Absolutely. Uh, casting is one of the hardest thing to, uh, to learn, especially I think for me, but, um, and Julie is right. Um, now we teach, when we teach um, casting, that's one of the first things that we, we teach, you know, is trying, like you're flickering that paint, you know, so that's kind of how you cast. And- it is. It sets all the rest of it up for success. Um, but I would really be interested to know what your experience was like getting into this, what challenges you faced, and what kind of responses you received going into a really male-dominated sport. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, it was really difficult. I think uh, about even 11 years ago, I did not see very many women uh, fly fishing. Um, I was fortunate Pasadena Casting Club had a woman president, so I, and it, it was close to me, but um, back then um, I had a fish with men and, you know, being married, that didn't, um, I mean, my husband was uh, supportive of me, but, you know, being married, it's not as easy uh, going out there and just fishing with, you know, some of the guys. So I went to a bunch of clubs and I got these like, you know, some of them were really cool. And some of them I got these blanks. They're like, is she lost? You know, and uh, typically they don't get women coming in. And I, I remember one story, I, I a guy told me one of the reasons um, when they see a woman come to their club is because usually she's looking for a, a a rich boyfriend is what, you know, quote, that's exact, you know, word that he said. And um, to me, I, I just, I just want to fish. I'm like telling guys, I just want to fish. So I didn't care. I was there to learn. And I went to every event. I just, you know, went to a lot of the clubs locally and I, I just wanted to fish and go have fun. And, um, I would drag some friends to learn with me until, you know, hey, more and more women wanted to learn. And so I belong to a few clubs where we teach women how to fish. So um, Southern Sierra Fly Fishers, it's now their, I believe since 2017, I, um, we started Celine's Fly Gal and I've been helping out teaching there. Um, I taught Pasadena Cast club the woman last year and Santa Clarita a fly fishing club last year um and so you know I'm always down to help women um, get out there learn how to fish because I know how difficult it was starting for me to get through that and now of course every everyone knows you know uh, I can fish and I'm for real I'm not there to you know uh Look, look for a boyfriend. I'm there to, you know, go fish. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned how important it was for you to see a woman in the club and how that helped make you feel a little bit more comfortable. And Deegan, it reminds me of something you said when you when you started fishing, you adopted a watch me mentality. And I think your watch me mentality was kind of in reference to this boy who said girls can't fish. And it was, well, watch me. But I think it could also be viewed as you want other girls to maybe watch you too. Like it's watch me for them. And what do you think, you know, how, how has social media played a role in your entry into fly fishing and your continuing to fly fish? And how has that journey been for you? How has it impacted you? Well, seeing that other girls fly fished also and seeing that I wasn't the only one kind of inspired me and then as just a little girl who was fishing I inspired other little girls to be fishing too and not think that fishing was just for boys. That leads to like a great point looking at both of you where you did have similar experiences even you know 11 years apart in some regard that there were men that you wanted or boys that you want to be like, watch me, like, watch me do this, watch me do something I enjoy that I'm good at. And I do think we look at it, the world is obviously becoming more inclusive. Sports are becoming more inclusive, all of that. But there still needs to be steps taken forward for those goals that you two both have as well. So on top of the things that you're doing and you're seeing, what do you think in the realm of fishing and fly fishing needs to be done 
to continue to promote the inclusivity? Yeah, I mean, you know, right now, um, I, I, there's a lot of talk about you only see, you know, a lot of the women are not given the opportunity to be out there. And so I, I just, I, I'm here to support, you know, all the women out there um, having a tough time being out there because um, it, it's true. It's, we're not, we're, I mean, I feel like so different from your normal fly fish, you know, uh, fly fishing person. Um, but it, it's nice to see we're including more and more women. I know in the local clubs here, they're doing uh, a lot, but there's more that can be done. Like I see they're starting to have classes, but I remember I was um, one of the, uh, I was the woman's director for the Fly Fishing Federation when they kicked off trying to get more women to come out. But still, I felt like back then I was saying, you need to support the classes and you need to have these classes available. You can't just like, we're going to start a woman's, you know, a, a woman's group and not have support behind it. So I, I feel like they need to have more recognition for the women who are, you know, doing a lot of work in, in getting more women out there. Um, just recognizing more women, I, uh, you know, we need to have more of that for sure. I think that those are some really great points. And also, I would like to add that getting more young girls into fly fishing, so there's also a future of girls in fly fishing, is really important to the sport as well. Yeah, I would agree with both yeah. of that. And really, if there was someone outside of both of your areas, um, or a woman who is interested in the sport more, or a club who wants to learn more about bringing women in and starting a group specifically for that, you two obviously are both a wealth of knowledge. Um, is there some way that they could reach out to you guys? like direct channels, social media, anywhere, just to pick your brains and ask questions if listeners wanted to? Yeah, I'm on uh, Instagram. So it's Annalisa underscore Del underscore Rosario. Um, so one of the things I've been doing, um, we started two years ago, I became a mentor for the Mayfly Project. And the Mayfly Project is an amazing organization uh, nonprofit. What we do is we teach uh, foster kids to fly fishing, and so it's been such a great journey. Uh, the the last the last year that we did, um, one of the girls that I was mentoring, it was incredible. She caught a twenty seven pound halibut, and the Mayfly Project has never done um, the uh, surf fishing before because usually we do lakes or we do rivers. But this time we decided, you know, we're here in SoCal, we went surf fishing and she hooked on a big halibut. And that was amazing. I mean, her confidence and all the kids watching, it was just amazing. So um, this year we're gonna start the program again. We've got um, so far eight not, um, foster kids that we're gonna be teaching where they we we gear them up at the end when they graduate we give them all the the um equipment for them to get um started with fly fishing That's so it's awesome. look it up it's the mayfly project yeah and then where can people reach out to you Deanne? um i'm on instagram also and so my group is fly girl global so fly underscore girl underscore global and then my personal account is march brown i done cool yeah. i will make sure to put those in captions i just want to make sure if people have questions that they know that's important where to go to, yeah. yeah you guys are a wealth of knowledge and speaking of questions and women recognizing other women i do want to pause and see do you, either of you have questions for each other do you, is there anything you want to know about annalisa and vice versa no pressure, but I just figured I would give you all the opportunity to talk to each other if you wanted. <laughs> I have a question for you, Deegan. I know you're, uh, you uh, got into, is it the, for the clothing stuff that you promote? 
Um, tell, tell me a little bit more about that, how you got into that, promoting. So, um, when I started fly fishing, no one really made girls clothes. Well, no one at all made girls clothes for fly fishing. So when um, Kara from Yellow Sally decided to start making um a clothing line for women in fly fishing and girls. My dad got on like a pre-order list for her clothes and it's kind of like leggings and stuff like that for wet waiting. And so she was kind of the first person to make women's clothing for fly fishing. You look super cute in them. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a question also. How is fishing the LA River? So uh the LA River is like 51 mile long. So it um the stretch that has been productive as of late is the stretch where the Long Beach side and I kid you not <laughs> at side. I have a weak stomach. Even I sometimes, uh, <laughs> I um, I need like double mask. <laughs> but um, the side closer to more downtown or um, I'd say Glendale area, super like I love this this section. But sometimes it's not as productive. So sometimes if we like, well, we gotta. I, I haven't caught a fish in a while, so we'll we'll go all the way to the Long Beach section. But um, the the LA part, um, I actually love that area. It's um, by Marsh Park, beautiful. Like there's a bike like bike path. Um, there's some restaurants around, and you would think you're not in LA when you're in this um, section. And it could be productive sometimes, you know, that's um, Glendale areas where I caught my very first carp. And that was, that was a lot of fun, but it took me a while to get it. But so some areas you have to know, just like, you know, in LA, the city of LA, it's like, you kind of have to know where you're going because some places are not the best area, but some, some places are a gem. I'll give you that. So yeah, if you ever want to come out, I'll take you out uh, anytime you guys want to come out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I might have to take you up on that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. About that. So we have Traverse yeah. City up, obviously further north in Michigan, but there's like the Betsy River and everything. Well, before we start to wrap up, is there anything else you would like to share with us, with listeners, with women who might want to get into this amazing sport? Yeah, I think like, um, you know, I get messages from people that, um, you know, want to fish certain areas in LA. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm always open and willing to take people out or sometimes people just want to know, you know, uh, if, if a, a certain stretch is productive. Um, feel free to reach out. I mean, a lot of people are actually friendly. Um, when I got into the sports, um, one thing is, you know, there's a lot of people with wealth of knowledge to, that are willing to share um, information. Um, I used to think like, oh, fly fishing is so expensive. I need a third job to support, you know, this hobby. But I think a lot of uh, companies, manufacturer have actually um, started out you know, creating startup kits to make it more affordable. And one thing that we always say when um, someone wants to get into it, when we have a group of uh, women that want to get into it, we tell them, you know what, we'll loan you gear because we, we don't want you to make the investment that's so expensive um, unless you fall in love with it, you know, unless you like it. We want you to try it. And if you, you like it, then yeah, maybe go ahead and make that investment. But, you know, I would hate for somebody just to try it and then, you know, buy all this equipment and then let it sit, you know, and not use it. So I always want, you know, go learn with us. We'll loan you. 
we'll loan you some gear. We've got extra gear. So, um, yeah, I mean, you'll find people that are totally open to loaning gear and um, getting you started with uh, fly fishing. Tegan, anything you want to share before we start to wrap up? I would say that if anyone was thinking about fly fishing, that they should definitely try it out because fly fishing is a great community and everyone that I've met has just been so kind and I think that it's really fun and it kind of promotes conservation, which is really great. I don't think I have anything else for that. No, we no. just want to let y'all know how much we appreciate yeah. not just taking the time to be on this podcast, but for everything you do. I mean, we both love the outdoors. We've both fished in one way or another, and we're just yeah. we're grateful to you. Yeah. And thank you for being here and sharing your stories. They were great to hear. Yeah. Like just super interesting and to get to know both of you a little bit better. Thank you yeah. so much. And again, if you guys are ever in LA, you know, let me know and we can take you out. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you.